So before we get into the inverse trigonometric functions, let's just take a moment to review what an actual inverse function is. So let's look at this function here, f of x equals 3x plus 1, which we know is a linear function. First thing we'll do is list three input-output pairs for f of x. So that just means I'm going to plug in any value I want to for x and find its corresponding y value. Now when x is 1, f of x would be 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1 is 4. When x is 2, we get 7, and when x is 3, we get 10. So there are three of many, 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 many input-output pairs for this function. And we know that when we graph the function, we're going to get something like this. It's going to be a line with y-intercept 1 and slope 3. So remember that this notation here means the inverse of f of x. It doesn't mean raising it to the negative 1. It means the inverse, the op the, not the opposite function, but the undoing function, I guess you could say. Remember that that function interchanges the roles of input and output. So if I want to list three pairs on that function, remember, since the roles are just reversed, 1, 4 becomes 4, 1, 2, 7 becomes 7, 2, and 3, 10 becomes 10, 3. So then something else to remember, how to find an inverse function. Well, this was made easier by calling f of x y. Remember that since we're interchanging the roles of input and output, we interchange x and y. And then what we do is solve for y. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides and then divide both sides by 3. And that is the expression for f inverse of x. And if you want to check, all three of these points should be solutions to that equation right there. So that's our formal procedure for finding the inverse function. Okay, now, what happens when the function doesn't necessarily have an inverse? Well, let's just look at this here. So f of x equals x squared. And again, we'll do input-output pairs again, but I've given you the x values I want you to look at. So this was going to be 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. And why doesn't it have an inverse function? Well, if you look at the inverse points... This would be 9, 3, just as an example. And this would be 9, negative 3. The inverse isn't a function because it has an input, 9, that corresponds to more than one value, 3 or negative 3. So that's why this doesn't have an inverse function. And you might remember that this is something we're going to have to deal with for the trig function. The trig functions are like this too. We have several x values that correspond to the same y value, so we're going to have to be able to address that. Well, how do we address that? we do something called restricting the domain. And what does it mean to restrict the domain? It just means to cut off at a certain x value so that we know that the function has an inverse afterwards. So one way to do that is to restrict the domain to x greater than or equal to zero. And if you remember what y equals x squared looks like, the part where x is greater than or equal to zero just looks like that. Remember, that's just half of the parabola. So with that in mind, now I can safely say for any value of x, I'm only going to correspond to one value of y, and the inverse will be a function, because what's going to happen on my part where x is greater than or equal to zero, I'm only dealing with this piece, which means there's no chance of a repeat, okay? So that's what restricting the domain is all about. So to find the inverse function, well, we know that we're saying y equals x squared, which means x equals y squared when I interchange x and y. And if I solve for y, I get y equals the square root of x, which is the inverse function of x. And just for a little bit of a visual here, the graph of the square root function looks like that. You notice there's some kind of symmetry with these graphs. And you might remember from your previous math experience that the functions together are symmetric along the line y equals x. And that's not totally important for this course, but it is something to remember as you go through mathematics. So with that said, what is f inverse of 49? Well, I know that f inverse is the square root function, so f inverse of 49 is 7, and f inverse of 5 is, well, the square root of 5. So there we have it. So another way of looking at that is, you know, what value, what original value of x gives me the output of 49? Because the input for the inverse is the same as the output from the original function.
So there's a little bit of an introduction to inverse functions, a little bit of a recap. We're going to get into the, as you can see, we're going to get into the sine function in a little bit here and talk about its inverse and talk about what happens. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.